Five years ago, I spent a whole week building an elaborate contraption just so my wife can let me know when lunch is ready. <laughs> David's team. What is this contraption? A telephone. <laughs> <laughs> it's an, a contraption that goes from the house to the bottom of the garden where, where I spend most of the morning. But why? Why? <laughs> because, uh, because I've got a little shed down there where I, where I write. Describe this, this contraption to us. OK, well, it's long. <laughs> it's, I've got a very long garden. Mm -hmm. And oh, okay. uh, it's on a slight uh, incline. Mm -hmm. It's made out of tubes. And my wife operates one end. I receive... <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> I receive, I receive something that comes out the other end of the tube. So it's, it's a very long tube, and she puts a little ball in one end. And the ball plops out the other end. And that's when lunch is ready. You sound like somebody who is teaching sex education but hasn't got a clue yourself. Well, there's a ball at one end, and a ball comes out the other end, and, and that's, that's when, when lunch is ready. <laughs> Elaborate. Is it the length of it? Yes. How long is it? Long. 60 metres. 60 metre long garden? I mean, you're doing well, so but not that well. Right. <laughs> How wide is your garden? Is it one metre? <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> and eight metres wide. Why okay. doesn't she just phone you or text you or WhatsApp you? <laughs> because, Rob, um, there's no phone reception at the bottom of the garden. You said your garden's on an incline, so is she yeah, putting said... a ball in one end? How's that travelling up? Well, it's an incline. Well, the incline from my end is at from... the house, yeah, and it... the bottom part is. It really is quite simple. No, but that's, you know. a de that's a decline. No, decline is what you would do if David was to suggest something a bit fruity. <laughs> that is a decline. <laughs> what happens when it reaches the shed? It plops. Oh yes, yes. Into the lid of a metal bin. Okay. Oh. So once it's installed, that's it. You can forget about it. I should take the pipes off the ground. Oh. All right. how, how did you suspend it off the ground? In a hedge. The pipe's very important as well, because we had a similar system at my house where we didn't use the pipe. My wife was at the bottom <laughs> in the shed working, <laughs> and I used to just roll it, roll the golf ball down, and there'd been a heavy snowfall, <laughs> and it gathered momentum, and it pushed it off. Uh, yeah, that's awful. The whole thing was flattened, yeah. and uh, that's sadly how my wife died. So it's very important <laughs> to keep it in case. <laughs> All right, well, look, what are you thinking? It does sound to me a little fantastical. It's peak boredom, isn't it? And some people get bored. I think the show's the going fine. <laughs> 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 I think it's true. I think it's true as well. I'm going to say it's true. OK, so, uh, Alex, <gasps> truth or lie? 60 metres. True! It's true. Alex has built a contraption just so his wife can tell him when lunch is ready. And we've got a clip of it. Yes! Oh. oh, my God. Whoa! Wow. I love it! Oh. I love it! It was so just good. like you described it. At school... Because of something I once had in my lunchbox, I was given a seven-syllable nickname. Please, team. You'd strike me as the kind of kid that you would have had a one-syllable nickname. <laughs> um, all right, what was in the lunchbox? A uh, sandwich, a snack... Uh, what was and... the snack? Well, rarely yeah. we find six of our seven syllables. <laughs> oh, Ooh. brilliant. What's your six-syllable <laughs> snack? <laughs> you can think of a six-syllable snack, surely. I can, yes. <laughs> the big one, the big one. The big one. The oh, big, away you go. The big pack lunch, six-syllable snack. I've thought of a ten-syllable one. Wow. Right. <laughs> a salt and vinegar packet of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You're so pleased, aren't you? <laughs> That's more than you need, though. Yeah. I missed it. What was the snap? <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the first syllable. Mine are all too long. <laughs> a packet and a half of cashew nuts. <laughs> Another ten. 
ridiculous. <laughs> I'll give you the first syllable if you want it. Please do. Dare. Oh, oh it's Dare Dare Lee. Lee. Triangles. Nearly. Dare Lee. Go on then, you can do the next three. Lunchable. Dairy, Dairy Lee Lunchable. Lunchable. You remember Dairy Lee Lunchables? I do, but I think they're after your time, no offence. I am. Um, <laughs> how dare you? I'm 27. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about feet, we're talking about years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, just be clear, the actual nickname was... Dairy Lee Lunchable Boy. <laughs> how long did the nickname stick? Oh, I would say, I mean, it was a good two weeks. <laughs> You know. Did you have a nickname before that? I was always called Rich. <laughs> that's really... that's so bad, isn't it? And what about after that? Oh, then it was uh, the artist formerly known as Dairy Lee Lunchable. <laughs> 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 were, were you the tallest kid in the year? Uh, yeah. I and they been... didn't think there was a tall nickname that would be more relevant <laughs> for you? When it comes to those nicknames, the decision-making process is very disordered. Yeah. There's no meeting where someone gets to go, this is ridiculous, this child is extremely <laughs> tall, and yet we're <laughs> focusing on a snack. <laughs> I'm thinking that, say, you're on the playing field, you're playing football, it's a, it's a long nickname to say, pass the ball, isn't it? Dairy oh, yeah. Lee Lunchable Boy. That, <laughs> that was not my nickname on, on, on the football pitch. What, what was, was that? What was that? Sub. Sub. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you reckon? Alice, is he telling the truth? No nicknames only last two weeks. That's what's so yeah. devastating about a school nickname, isn't it? Yeah. They really linger. Did you have one, Alice? I actually did have one. Envelope bum. <laughs> we don't want to know how that came about. <laughs> what are you thinking, Les? Well, I think Richard is so good at wordplay and mm. using syllables. It sounds like <laughs> the kind of <laughs> nickname he has given himself. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, what are you going to say? The uh, tallest kid in the school has never had a nickname, because I did say before and after, yeah. no, nothing people, to do with my People hurt. quite liked me, Lee. It's a lie. No, no it's a lie. lie. No, <laughs> Richard, they're saying that it's a lie. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It was... a lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Richard wasn't given a seven-syllable nickname at school because of something he had in his lunchbox. OK, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still blind. Neither of my PPIs work. <laughs> um... <laughs> so, David, would you save us all a lot of time and read my card out yes, for me, please? Yes, gladly. During lockdown, I bought a pogo stick to use as a home school teaching aid. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lee's team. OK, so, Chris, have you got children? Um, just the one. And this was for, what, your homeschooling PE or something? Yes. When we did homeschooling, we split up the tasks. I, I was in charge of PE and maths, and my wife was in charge of reading and art for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> At what age is your child? During lockdown, she was six. And do you do anything else for PE or just pogo stick? <laughs> I'm quite a lazy guy, Lee. So I realised that when you're on a pogo stick and you're bouncing away, <laughs> what you're trying to do is see how many you can do. How many repetitions without touching the ground? Yeah, a match. You have is to also... touch the ground, Lee, to be fair. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's levitating, which we still haven't mastered. I appreciate you said it for comic effect, Rob, but you know exactly what I meant. <laughs> well, what I try to do is I, 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 I realise that how many is also what, what you do often in maths. And I could consolidate all of my teaching efforts into one tidy little package of minimal effort. <laughs> so I invented pogo maths. OK. And um, you just shout out some sums and they have to bounce out the answers. But are they experienced in pogo sticking? Because it's quite hard. Well, I mean, it does help if you can use a pogo stick first, so you have to get over that hurdle, but that's, you know... You have to get over a hurdle as well. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you said that for comic effect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. We have a pogo stick. Yeah. Well, it's, and... it's Chris's card. Make him do it. <laughs> I don't think the BBC's got enough money to cover the insurance on this. <laughs> don't worry, I've got this covered, Chris. Like the card, let David do it for you. <laughs> there is a pogo stick behind you, I believe. Oh, my gosh. There it is. <sighs> don't do it there, and make sure you're two metres away from me. <laughs> right. Down you go. Now, Chris... Hang on, let me have a practice go first. He's not doing this it, Chris. This is going Chris. really well, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Dead easy. Um, are you ready? Yes. What is 
8 minus 5. OK. The problem I've got now is if I bounce and fall off after, say, 2, you don't know if I'm bad at pogo or bad at maths. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three. Give it yeah. Well, this is this is this is good because you've got to get them all right if you want to do dinner tonight. Um, so let's just see how many I can do. Yeah, let's see how many you can do. I'll this try and jump point. up onto that. How about oh, that? No. Don't, don't do it! Don't do it! One, oh, no, two, do it. three, four, so, five, <laughs> six, <laughs> seven. Oh. So, having experienced it, yes. Do you think he's telling the truth? What do we think? I don't know. There's still dead pogo sticks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh There's... yes. I imagine how hard you could hit the ball with a spring-mounted snooker cue. I mean, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you thinking about this story? The more I think about, it, the more I think it wouldn't work because the white ball's going to spin back. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> We're talking now about the maths and the pogo. Right. Gotcha. Do you reckon it's true? I think it's true that Chris is, is lazy. I'm not um, really blind, it just gets me out of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, tell me about it, mate. I do it all the time myself. <laughs> How do you think I park so close to Sainsbury's? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think he's lying. You think he's lying? I think he's lying as well. You think he's lying? We'll, we'll go with my team and say he's lying. OK, saying it's a lie. So, Chris, maths on the pogo stick. Was it true or was it a lie? Pogo maths, copyright, Chris McCausland, 2020. True. Oh! oh. oh. Sorry. What a good one. Yes, it's true. Chris did use a pogo stick to teach his daughter maths. Possession. Ah, right. First of all, yes. take the item out and pop it on the desk. Then, read out the card. This is my woolly hat. I can't wear it because whenever my ears get warm, I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> David's team. Uh, uh, when... Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to fall asleep when your ears get warm? Um, well, I'd say ten minutes. The problem you've done there now, Joss, is you've made it possible to demonstrate. <laughs> You might want to change that to four and a half days. OK. Do you want me to put the hat on for ten minutes? Yes. OK. And have you had many embarrassing situations with this as a Well, problem? I'm currently wearing it on primetime TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you, like, snoozed off? I have, yeah. I've moments. numerous... I've snoozed off probably three times. Will you describe the three times in reverse order of hilariousness? <laughs> 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 OK, so all three times have been on trains. And uh, in reverse order of hilariousness, didn't miss my stop, didn't miss my stop, missed my stop. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the order right there. Yeah. <laughs> Gemma's got one that only covers one ear. So are, yeah. you, are you sleepy on the left-hand side? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me, if I just... <laughs> Can I... Th th genuinely... My ears are warming up and I'm feeling... <laughs> Can I take it off? You're genuinely you're feeling a bit drowsy. Presumably, sometimes you don't want to fall asleep, but wouldn't it also be quite useful if it's true? Because I do. I have done that. Rob. To get off, stick it on. <laughs> I can honestly tell you, Rob, that this has never <laughs> helped me get off. I don't think anyone would get off if you were that. No. <laughs> oh, oh, so oh, soon in the show, Sophie. <laughs> There's seven billion people on this planet. Some of them are into anything. <laughs> That's reassuring. <laughs> Thank you very much, yeah, David. Exactly, absolutely. But that's, you know. There's some weirdo out there that would be into me in a hat. Do you know what, David? Since you got married, you've been very cocky. <laughs> 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 so, why were you wearing it on the train anyway? They're not perfectly run, our railways, but I don't <laughs> usually find that no, the, the I... temperature is arctic I'll in a railway carriage. I'll be honest with you, David. Don't, don't insult me with that phrase, because we know <laughs> the format is you may not be being honest, and, and I, I won't hold that against you. It's a parlour game. You know. okay, okay. You're not denying an affair. You know. um, <laughs> you're not denying it? <laughs> Josh Whittacombe fails to deny affair. <laughs> this sounds crass, but I wore it on the train because I didn't want people to recognise me. <laughs> so you, you thought... <laughs> The way of detracting attention <laughs> is to put on an enormous bobble hat. <laughs> what are you thinking, Gemma? I don't think this is true. I think it's a lie. Yeah, it's got to be a lie. Who falls asleep by putting a hat on? I think it might be true. Oh. But Ooh. I'm not going to overrule my team. 
because Never. I'm, I'm just going to... Just... You don't have the strength of character for that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so they're saying it's a lie. Josh yeah. Widdicombe, truth or lie? David, it's true. Oh! Wow! Oh. Yes, it's true. Josh does fall asleep if his ears get warm. Uh, as a child, my mum got so fed up with me wandering off, she made me wear a bell around my neck whenever we went shopping. Wow. <laughs> Please, Tim. Was she a cow? <laughs> I'm not sure that Miles's mother being a cow would explain it, because I don't think it's the cow's own policy to wear the bells. <laughs> so, first of all, how bad were you at wandering? Was this a regular thing? I wouldn't stay still. Any sort of open space I would see as a thing to run towards rather than... So you know, what was... shopping centres were you going to that were such wide spaces to well, run in? Uh, I suppose uh, Brent Cross Shopping Centre would have been our, our regular haunt. But OK. No. What age was this? I would have been about probably four to the age of seven. And when you were in infant school, every time you went out to the playground, did everyone think it was playtime over and straight back in again? <laughs> <laughs> It, it was only done on family outings. Only done on shopping because... days. Shopping okay. Day. And is it a traditional bell with the little thing inside that clanks yeah, what against does it look the? Like? like a sort of cat's bell, essentially. But hang on, there's one massive problem here. A cat is on all fours and the bell dangles. The bell oh, is going to be yeah. touching your body and it won't dangle. Discuss. Well, <laughs> she attached it to a part of me that, that dangled. <laughs> What was the furthest you ever got? What were you searching for? Um, I hope it wasn't sparrows, cos you'd never get them. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Brent Cross terms, I, I once got from John Lewis to Phoenix. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> uh, Mars, could I ask you to tell me how big the bell was, but accurately? <laughs> <laughs> Can, I suppose three quarters of the size of a ping pong ball. Hang on. And was it, was it a sphere or bell-shaped? Any bell, by definition, is bell-shaped. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think, Sarah? It sounds a bit draconian, you know, a bell round your child's neck. Yeah, I think it would be a terrible failing of parenting, <laughs> so not for me. It's, it's just not a system that works. If no. you've drifted into a Morris dance area, then you're going to have a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. what you'd have in the horror film yeah. version of your life, yeah. where yeah. you yes. run off and then your mother's desperately looking for you and then suddenly she sees a load of Morris dancers and it totally confuses <laughs> the system. Lots of close-ups of grinning Morris dancers. No, no, the Morris yeah. dancers, the Morris dancers. I can't hear Miles' yeah. little tinkling bell. Yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah. could be describing any Saturday of my childhood. <laughs> So what are you going to say, Lee? We're not having no. it. They're not having we're not it. Having no, they're it. saying it's a lie. Uh, Miles, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Uh, that was a lie. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Miles' mum didn't make him wear a bell around his neck. <clears throat> for several months, I had to sleep on the floor because I'd given up my bed for a sunbed. <laughs> Please, T. When was this, Claudia? Yes. Um, I think it was in the 90s. Why did you give it up as opposed to just getting a sunbed? Yeah. Oh, yes, because... Have a little read of it again if you need to. <laughs> no, 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 I'm absolutely fine. Who needs a bed? I'll sleep on the floor. More well, important well, to be orange. Was it... <laughs> Sounds like someone speed dating with an umpa lumpa. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Right, talk us through the process of how you got a sunbed. Yeah, I well, I didn't purchase one. I borrowed one for you a bit for some money. F for what? I, She's well, trying I, to say she rented, I rented one, I think. That's what so I, you, I rented. So a you rented sunbed. a sunbed. I rented. Hello, if you want a sunbed, I'll give you some money. Yeah. yeah and then for a couple of months, yeah, yeah. for several months. <laughs> <laughs> how much was a sunbed in the 1990s? Well, it was about forty pounds a month. Forty quid a month to month. rent a sunbed. And they were called sunbeds for rental. Dot wow, com. what a great name. Yeah. Dot, dot com. com. Dot dot com. In the 1990s. Oh, dot com. No, it wasn't dot com. Just hello, uh, VHS, other things, toasties. Hello, we put sunbeds. <laughs> and oh, sunbeds, toasties and pot tarts. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> Where are you living? Have you set out into the world as a young I've set Claudia? Out. I'm at university. Oh. Where were you at university? Cambridge. No. No. <laughs> I'm it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> What did you study? History of art. We could test her on that. <laughs> Go on, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when, was, when was the first painting? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So where was this room? Was it in a campus block? No, what? it was in... I was in a road. Just a room in a road? <laughs> was it surrounded at all by a house? <laughs> Did you sleep on the floor next to the summer? Curled up like a mushroom. That's but how I sleep. Well, you're probably <laughs> under the lamp too long. <laughs> Did you ever bring anyone back after a night out? <laughs> I had quite an unsuccessful love life at university. Were, they, were they just men leaving more tanned than when they came in? <laughs> <laughs> Kate, what, what do you think? Well, it, it's tricky, isn't it? Because the way she's stumbling and hesitating no, could be a complete, true. you know, red herring. Could Orange be. herring. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to go lie. Think, the thing is, Claudia's been lie. on the show many times before, and yeah. sometimes she tells the truth, sometimes she lies, but what I've learnt about her is she doesn't know what's going on in her own <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got one now at home? No, because I found a new way. What's uh, the new oh, way? Being spray-painted. <gasps> Once a week, twice a week during stripping. <laughs> I had a spray tan once. You had, had a spray tan? Yeah, when we did the trip to Greece, they wanted us to look a little bit tan before we went, so a girl came round to my house, set up what looked like a crime scene tent in the, yeah. in the, in the living room, put paper pants on me, and went... She, she actually put them on you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll never get them on, dear. Come on, lift your leg up. Uh, is she telling the truth or telling a lie? I think we go true. You think it's a lie, don't you? I think it's a lie. I think it is true. You're going to say true? OK. Claudia, was it the truth or was it a lie? It is true. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yes, it's true. Claudia really did sleep on the floor to make space for a sunbed.